capitalism, all of the gains in automation, it goes to the owner class. All you have to do is have everyone be an owner, and now suddenly, any gain in automation is a gain for everybody. If you grow just one thing, it may not grow as well as if it grows with another thing. A good example of that is called the, the Three Sisters Method of Farming. There is definitely multi-apartment buildings or multi-families that do do a passive A hundred million dollars that they gave to Joe Rogan that they would kind of be out if they breach contract. Is that a bigger number? Or is two billion a bigger number? I don't know. Zach. It's a tough one. It's I know. Really hard. And maybe maybe yes. comparing numbers is not uh, Jeremy Strong's. Gotta go kill a Jenny. So I don't think you should kill her. I don't think it's a good idea. It's a ghost, dude. Welcome back, everybody, to Bread Theory. So tonight we are going to be getting back to our short essay series. Um, and tonight we're going to be doing one by Helen Keller, who is a, a, an avid socialist in her lifetime. Uh, and in this particular essay is going to give a good defense and... and uh, uh, a, a good, um, yeah, just a good defense of the IWW and why people should join it. So if you haven't heard yet, we are, we do have a new way to help support the stream. My wife, Amanda has been baking bread, um, sourdough that she's making from scratch. You can see her work and you can order bread by going to her Instagram and messaging her. And if you live in the US or Canada, we can uh, mail it out to you. Uh, these these are sizable loaves though. You know, it's like somewhere between three and five pounds a loaf. So it does take a little bit of shipping to accomplish this. But uh, so far the the People who have bought it have said it's been well worth um, the price. And uh, yeah, just something that she's gotten into lately and, and offered as a way to help out uh, the stream more. So go check out that. It's uh, Ouija Bread. So uh, Instagram.com slash underscore Ouija Bread underscore. All right, and also, I like to remind people that um, Bread Theory is a, a member, one of the founding members of Left Signal Boost TV. So I encourage you all to go check that out as well. Have many uh, leftist creators. I think we're up to fifteen now, who all post and uh, stream. If you know, for the ones that do stream. Uh, our, our stuff all in the same place so you can learn out about, about all sorts of leftist endeavors right now uh, and find a cool a bunch of cool people to follow by going to facebook.com slash uh, left signal boost TV and you'll always be notified of, of anytime any one of us goes live so that's a good way to, to never miss a show either Okay, so as always, uh, when we do educational stuff, um, there are no stupid questions except for the question that is asked in bad faith. So maybe you're new to leftism, perhaps you're, you know, a little ways into it but still have some questions, um, don't hesitate to ask. Or maybe just this particular text is you find difficult or... Um, confusing in one way or another. Don't hesitate to ask. This is a space of learning. So, all right, let's get into it. We're using socialism for all on, whoops, on YouTube. Really great channel. Uh, I think he is probably my favorite of all audiobook readers that I've ever encountered, I would say. Very clear voice, and then he also has um, the education to, to back up, you know, to, to inform what he's talking about in these texts. So, 
oftentimes he'll add little asides or um, bits of supplemental information. And, and uh, if you want to go check out this video on your own time, I will put that in the chat as well. All right, I think that's enough stuff to add to the chat for now. We will start the audiobook. So this is Helen Keller on behalf or in behalf. In behalf? I wonder if that's a typo. In behalf of the IWW. That's strange. Now, even on uh, Marxist.org, it says, in behalf of the IWW. Wow. A strangely worded title. I, uh, maybe we'll figure out why it is that rather than on behalf. But here we go. Socialism for All, reading on behalf of the IWW. Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is October 26, 2020. And this is an audiobook of In Behalf of the IWW by Helen Keller from 1918. Many people know Helen Keller as a woman who was deaf and blind and yet managed to become educated and become an effective public advocate and activist. Um, fewer people know that she was a committed socialist who worked with the IWW. The IWW was a radical anti-capitalist labor union that challenged all the norms for the labor movement of the time. They tried to build what Lenin called both the trade union consciousness, that is advocating uh, for better conditions, better pay, better hours, etc. for workers, but also a revolutionary consciousness, um, not just fighting for the day-to-day -day benefits, but going beyond that and saying we'll take what benefits we can get now, but also advocating for socialist revolution and an end to capitalism. So this uh, pamphlet or article in behalf of the IWW was first published in The Liberator, March 1918. The source is Helen Keller, Her Socialist Years from International Publishers, 1967. Transcription was by Brian Baggins, and the online version is from the Helen Keller Reference Archive, Marxists.org 2000. So let's begin the audiobook. Down through the long weary years, the will of the ruling class has been to suppress either the man or his message when they antagonized its interests. From the execution of the propagandist and the burning of books, down through the various degrees of censorship and expurgation to the highly civilized legal indictment and winking at mob crime by constituted authorities, the cry has ever been, crucify him. The ideas and activities of minorities are misunderstood and misrepresented. It is easier to condemn than to investigate. It takes courage to steer one's course through a storm of abuse and ignominy. Looks like we have a guest. Oh, it's Trisha. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Trisha, how's it going? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late here. I was wrapping a few things up. <laughs> oh, no problem. Thank you for the oh. reminder message, though. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, that. you're welcome. I should have I should have put it out a little bit earlier, but hey, I was I was busy as well, eating dinner and stuff. Sure happens. Um, so Shanika says, "In behalf of" means for the benefit of or in the interest of. I always hear it phrased as like on behalf. So it's, it's interesting that it came out that way. Oh, you got an ad break. Uh, sorry about that, Nate. Um, yeah, I got to figure out. I think I have Twitch set up on automatic ad breaks now uh, to go like in the middle of the show. So I'm trying to, to monitor when that happens. It's supposed to give me warnings when, when that's supposed to come up, but so far it has not done that. So. I noticed it did that a few times last week when I was watching uh, the episode. I I can't remember the fellow you were talking with last week. It was a good show though, but yeah, it kept. Oh yeah, yeah. Chet Chet Gaines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good show. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. I, I don't usually do just straight up uh, interview shows, so I was I was pretty nervous for it, but uh, he he made a, a good guest. Um, 
had a lot to say about the subject, so it went pretty well. Oh, all right. Let's get uh, back in. Do you want me to? I, it's, it's only been like a, uh, two minutes. Do you want me to, to restart this for you? If everybody in the audience is cool with that, too. Yeah. I, in in I fact, mean, uh, <laughs> at least it's not yeah. aligning too much. No, no. Um, and really, this I think this is the beginning here because he already did the everything before that is his intro so we'll just we'll just start from the beginning of the text which only been going on for like a minute maybe so i think okay. we'll be okay thank you for that i appreciate it no problem down through the long weary years yeah, the will of the ruling class has been to suppress either the man or his message when they antagonize interests from the execution of the propagandist and the burning of books down through the various degrees of censorship and expurgation to the highly civilized legal indictment and winking at mob crime by constituted authorities. The cry has ever been, crucify him. The ideas and activities of minorities are misunderstood and misrepresented. It is easier to condemn than to investigate. It takes courage to steer one's course through a storm of abuse and ignominy. But I believe that discussion of even the most bitterly controverted matters is demanded by our love of justice, by our sense of fairness, and an honest desire to understand the problems that are rending society. Let us review the facts relating to the situation of the IWWs since the United States entered the war with the declared purpose to conserve the liberties of the free peoples of the world. Comment from S4A. Hello, uh, Dai Gozali. How, I'm doing pretty well. How are you? I don't think I've seen you in the chat before. So how's it going? We're, we're covering a, a uh, essay by Helen Keller tonight uh, in behalf of the IWW. So yeah, that's what we're up to. That's good. Good to hear. Hey, Mouse Lander, how are you? It's been a while since I've seen you. All right, so getting back to the text, this is uh, his, his side comment here on the text. This is, of course, World War I, and uh, there was a major, major trial against many leaders of the IWW for speaking out against that war. During the last few months in Washington State, at Pasco, and throughout the Yakima Valley, many IWW members have been arrested without warrants, thrown into bullpens without access to attorney, denied bail and trial by jury, and some of them shot. Did any of the leading newspapers denounce these acts as unlawful, cruel, undemocratic? No. On the contrary, most of them indirectly praised the perpetrators of these crimes for their patriotic service. On August 1st, 1917, in Butte, Montana, a cripple, Frank Little, a member of the executive board of the IWW, was forced out of bed at three o'clock in the morning by masked citizens dragged behind an automobile and hanged on a railroad trestle. Jeez. Were the offenders punished? No. A high government official has publicly condoned this murder, thereby upholding lynch law and mob rule. On the 12th of last July, 1,200 minors were deported from Bisbee, Arizona without legal process. Comment, those are people who work in mines, not young people. Among them were many who were not IWWs or even in sympathy with them. They were all packed into freight cars like cattle and flung upon the desert of New Mexico where they would have died of thirst and hunger if an outraged society had not protested. Jeez. So this was a time, yeah, this was a time when you could basically outright murder anyone who, you know, was, was part of the IWW or claimed to be an anarchist. Um, there was, they basically, they just suspended the law uh, time and time again. Um, I think this wasn't long after the Haymarket riot, I believe, where they ended up hanging, you know, with very little due process, um, some random anarchists who had nothing to do with the, the bombing. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, stressful times in the U.S. around then. It was absolutely atrocious, the shit that people could get away with. And like she just said, not even uh, 
you know, getting any kind of reprimand for it, but being praised as a patriot, again, sounds fucking familiar. Yeah. 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 So I guess I, I looked it up quickly there. It looks like the Haymarket uh, riot was in 1886, but still um, within that band of, of time, uh, 20 years before and after uh, the turn of the century, yeah, it's basically just suspend the law it, as long as it was a leftist person that you were um, cracking down on. Yeah, I, th I think they did say New Mexico. They just threw him out into the desert of New Mexico. Um, South Carolina Mill Massacre also. I oh, don't know about that one. Haven't heard of that yet. That'd be interesting. And after that strike, they outlawed unions and strikes in South Carolina. Wow. <laughs> Just, you know, some light abridgment of your, your right of free association, but, you know, no big deal. <laughs> oh, no. Has Trisha frozen? Oh. Uh, Yep, looks like she's getting bad connection again. Ah, uh, you're back. Okay. Hard for the course around here. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah, that, that, that Wi-Fi sucks in your area. Uh-huh. Sure, it's pretty up in the mountains, but Wi-Fi sure is. is shit. That's too bad. That, that's terrible. <sighs> All right, moving on. President Wilson telegraphed the governor of Arizona that it was a bad thing to do, and a commission was sent to investigate, but nothing has been done. No measures have been taken to return the miners to their homes and families. Last September 5th, an army of officials raided every hall and office of the IWW from Maine to California. They rounded up 166 IWW officers, members, and sympathizers, and now they are in jail in Chicago awaiting trial on the general charge of conspiracy. In a short time, these men will be tried in a Chicago court. The newspapers will be full of stupid, if not malicious, comments on their trial. Let us keep an open mind. Let us try to preserve the integrity of our judgment against the misrepresentation, ignorance, and cowardice of the day. Yeah, I mean, that's the <laughs> the smallest of, of open minds to actually want people to, I don't know, have real charges if they're being brought to court. Like, just being part of an organization is, is enough to uh, condemn you, apparently, in this time, as long as it's the wrong organization. Like, they, they, they crack down super hard on uh, leftists at this, in this time in the US. Mm -hmm. So it's like Red Scare Wave 1. Yeah, right? Straight up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so this was uh, this was written in 1918, so they had just had the October Revolution uh, in the Soviet, in what would become the Soviet Union. So, yeah. This stuff is all ramping up all at the same time. In fact, I don't know. Would this be the time that the, the US and other Imperial powers were trying to overthrow the, the new Soviet Union? It might be. I'll have to look that up. But I, I mean, it, was, it wasn't long after that they had their revolution that uh, they were already being, you know, threatened by imperialist powers. So. Yeah. Like, how dare your workers demand that, you know, they get decent pay and all yeah. that. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, how, how dare anyone choose a form of government other than just the, you know, run-of-the-mill uh, capitalist form. So. Right. You gotta exploit to be in the right there. What the fuck? Apparently. Apparently. If you're not an exploiter, then the exploiter is gonna take you out. Yeah, well, I mean, that is the, the fear of the, the owner class. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Just because so much legislation and outright war has gone to fight back against basic human rights. Oh, absolutely. To protect the bourgeoisie and their ability to sit on their fucking lazy asses and not work while literally having a parasitic relationship with the rest of the populace. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, they, and and they do that. They will they will violently defend their right to just do nothing and collect money for it. It's pathetic. It is. It is. Let's see. I'm looking up the history of the the general strike in the U.S. Let's see. I don't know. Oh, there was a Seattle general strike in, in 1919. 60,000 workers walked off the job in support of striking shipyard workers. Organized by the Central Labor Council, the strike brought city businesses to a standstill. For five days, workers' committees operated everything from mass strike kitchens to essential services such as hospital deliveries. A historic lesson was taught the working class can run a society and without their bosses. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Goes to tell yeah. you the job creators are unnecessary. Yeah, they're not job creators. They just they entitled spoiled uh, people that stumbled one way or another into owning something. Right. They don't create anything except disparity in finances. There. Yeah. All they give a shit about is themselves. Yep. Yeah, just siphon all the the uh, excess labor profits up to themselves from people that can least afford to, to have it taken from them. Yep. Profit margins are unpaid wages. Nothing more. Yeah, that's right. They're not yep. entitled to that. I don't give a shit what they invested, and we'll put that in those quotes too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They're, they're not entitled to that. Right. Definitely not. Nope. They, they're basically just functioning as a parasite. So they're about as entitled to uh, the the product of, of labor from the, the workers as a tick is entitled to the blood of its host. Right. Well, All right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Moving on. We need DEET. Let us... <laughs> yes, there we go. Where is the cultural DEET that we can spray mm -hmm. on society? How are you doing tonight, James? Uh, most of them got the money from family or ripping off people or pure luck. Not working. Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah, yeah you look into the history of, of any of these, you know, great men of, of history or supposed great men of history. And every time they got a loan, usually from a family member, or they just were born into wealth, um, or they they spent years or decades trying to build up a business, being supported by their spouse. Um, no one just walks into a bank and says, hey, I got a really cool idea. Give me lots of money for it. Okay. And, and then does the entire business themselves and, you know never exploits anybody because even if that were true that they they got the money in a legitimate way in the first place to start a business they're still getting rich by exploiting the labor of the workers so no one no one no one becomes a millionaire i mean or very few become a millionaire through their own labor and uh nobody becomes a billionaire through their own labor not even on shark tank <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. It makes them feel entitled there, even if they bothered to step out and get a loan. Because okay, if you got a loan to start a business, who's really paying that loan back? It's not yeah, you. The workers. It's, it's, yeah. it's everybody contributing. So if if anything, the proper way to start a business via that route would be as a collective getting a business loan. Right. Then, you know. Right. Everybody bears part of that responsibility of repaying the loan, but everybody also still gets their fair share of what is produced. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. So then everyone paying the loan at the same time is, is getting the, the excess labor. There is not excess labor value in that situation, but they're getting, you know, what is thought of as profit, you know? So. The Shoot. Cut out for a second again. Oh, 
I can hear you, but I, you're not moving. Did I freeze again? Your your image froze. I can hear your voice though. Okay. Well, at least you can still hear me talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the important part. So. Right. <laughs> All right, well, let's carry on in the book, or in the, the essay. Let's refuse to yield to conventional lies and censure. Let us keep our hearts tender towards those who are struggling mightily against the greatest evils of the age. Who is truly indicted, they or the social system that has produced them? A society that permits the conditions out of which the IWWs have sprung stands self-condemned. The IWW is pitted against the whole profit-making system. It insists that there can be no compromise so long as the majority of the working class lives in want, while the master class lives in luxury. According to its statement, quote, there can be no peace until the workers organize as a class, take possession of the resources of the earth and the machinery of production and distribution, and abolish the wage system. That is absolutely true. Right? That's, you know, nail on the head right there. There can be no peace until the, the, the workers seize or, or otherwise control the means of production. And that's true because violence is done every day to workers. You know, their, their excess labor value is stolen. They are made to scramble just to get the basics to survive. Um, yeah, there can be no peace. There can be no end to violence until we do away with the structurally exploitative system of capitalism yeah one of the older examples of no justice no peace absolutely absolutely and thank you very much for the 10 bits ali osher good to see you everyone should go follow okay. ali osher I, I shouted him out there in the the chat really great channel covers uh national politics mostly um yeah go check him out Right, moving on unquote in other words the workers in their collectivity must own and operate all the essential industrial institutions and secure to each laborer the full value of his produce mm -hmm. I think it is for this declaration of democratic purpose and not for any wish to betray their country that the IWW members are being persecuted beaten imprisoned and murdered Surely the demands of the IWW are just. It is right that the creators of wealth should own what they create. When shall we learn that we are related one to the other, that we are members of one body, that injury to one is an injury to all? Mm -hmm. Until the spirit of love for our fellow workers, regardless of race, color, creed, or sex, shall fill the world, until the great mass of the people shall be filled with a sense of responsibility for each other's welfare, Social justice cannot be attained, and there can never be lasting peace upon earth. There we go. Talking about intersectionality. Uh, yep. Back just over 100 years ago, she got it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's not enough for, for a, a select few to get control over the means of production and, and to finally break free of the chains of, of uh, capitalism. It, it has to be everybody. Um, regardless of, uh, you know, she said, regardless of creed, sex, uh, skin color, whatever. So we are all in this together. And then, and that's how we build a movement is, is by including everyone because everyone is, is affected by capitalism in one way or another. All of that. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't want the door to rattle. I think Amanda's gonna come on the show. Awesome. You gonna get a chair? Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll wait to, to continue until Amanda is set up. That's okay, just slow the show down. I'm just kidding, come over here, you. <laughs> Uh, I like guys. I make bread. I also make the bed. <laughs> we made the bed together. What do you mean? <laughs> and I get harassed by Zach. <laughs> harassed. Right. Harassed. Right. <laughs> That's right, Shanika. 
Solidarity oh. is anti-racist and anti-sexist. Oh no, Zen's frozen. I know, sure, her image is frozen, but I can still hear her voice. So we can still, somehow we're still getting through. Hey, these are that the kind part. of headphones I want for work. <laughs> uh, cool story. What's what's your problem with the headphones now? No, I just said these are the kind of headphones I want for work. Oh yeah. Yeah, but I don't think they would fit into your. You can get wireless Bluetooth. Oh yeah, I used to have wireless Bluetooth ones. I don't know what happened to them. Is it like the headband? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so how are you doing tonight, Amanda? I'm okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Considering I got harassed all the way in here, first couldn't even come on my show, come on my show, and I can't even get in here. Oh, whatever. Because you blocked the door like I'm some sort of rabid dog. I blocked the door because <laughs> our door does not fit in the door jam, and it rattles if I don't. I'm just teasing you. Are you though? And then <laughs> just kidding. Lurch wasn't ready to be baked, so. Lurch, for, for those not in the know yet, is the, the sourdough starter that Amanda uses. <gasps> He's named Lurch. Zen, you missed it! I made a bread theory loaf. Oh, like, yeah. I carved the bread <laughs> theory triangles into it. Yeah. Oh, hell about, yeah. I'm going to pull that up just one, <laughs> one second. We'll pull that up so everyone can see. But... I mean, now I'm just an angry white woman. White women? Yeah. I'm every woman now. Take that. Oh, yeah. You're every woman? Yeah. It's all in you. Except for Amy, Amy Coney Barrett. So there you go. There's there's the bread through the bread. Can can be yours for the right price? I can't, I can't figure out pricing, okay? Because, like, the shipping boxes are, like, 10 or $12 a piece. But it can fit in many loaves. It just it fluctuates. So I gotta like go to the post office and have like a legit real life conversation with my friends and figure out. But yeah. For, but for now, if you do want to buy any of the bread, any anybody, just just assume it's gonna be about ten dollars in, in shipping. And that's that's within the U.S. and Canada. I don't know about. We haven't even looked into international shipping, but let's just keep it being it... fresh bread. You yeah. Know, we don't want to send it too far because we want it to be. A good product by the time it gets there yeah we want you to enjoy it without mold <laughs> or just without being stale you know I, I didn't get a chance to tell you guys before like the first box of bread came on time everything was on point like i was able to you know pop two of the three in the freezer and and slowly eat my way through them but the post office took so damn long getting the second box here that by the time they did it was molded Oh, oh I'm no! So yeah, I'm sorry. We'll have to send you a a, a replacement one. I, it's okay. No, I just wanted to let you know because the the post office that maybe checking oh. into a different shipping company or something might do a little better. I'm not sure why they, you know, were separated by about a week in delivery. That's but they fucked up. That's, that's not, okay. I, I, you, I yeah. do not want to obligated to some more i just wanted yeah, to let send them all at the same yeah time. they all went at the same you know what it probably just was a simple mistake yeah that's too but bad, that's good though. to know because like they were so great they were so helpful and like to be honest right now i'm kind of butthurt by ups so i don't know if i necessarily want to use them but i could always try fedex true true there's options yeah yeah, yeah. it just yeah uh, it kind of broke my heart to open the box and see yeah. that all three That's of too the bad. Were molded, that makes me but... sad too. Yeah. Your bread Jane... is so good. I love it. Yeah. Oh crazy. man. Thank you. Uh, that's what I had for breakfast this morning. It's, I was, it's amazing. I was thinking about doing in the fall and winter like smaller loaves so you could have bread bowls for soup. Now that, that would, would be awesome. That'd be pretty cool. Because the crust on that is thick enough, I don't think a soup would like. No, I think it could definitely pull work. through it. For sure. Yeah, I think but... that would be perfect. <laughs> Whether it James... be stew or like chicken noodle soup. Or yeah, what, yeah, like, whatever you I, want. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. James, oh, James getting rolls. in his plug <laughs> for pizza rolls, as always. <laughs> we see you, James. They're, James, they're... I'm this close 
to making Zach film me <laughs> making pizza rolls so I can send it to you. <laughs> Hell yeah. We should do that. That'd be a, that'd be a good thing a to good put joke. up on, on Instagram. <laughs> These are the pepperonis of patriarchy. See as you burn them in the fires of your oven. Oh. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting really metaphorical on this. Bread huh? represents the I'm flesh of right. the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> also watch it burn. <laughs> yeah, we gotta be careful saying stuff like that, though. So I'm saying it's representative of... Representative of, not that you actually advocate for that, right? Right. Right. I would okay. never... But I would give them a harsh scolding had I encountered them in a dark alley. No. I would tell them I'm disappointed. Yeah, super disappointed. In and it really hurt my feelings and my uterus and everybody else's feelings in uterus. And it's not nice. Yeah. And stay away from the alphabet mafia. Yeah. Because if you come for them... D d no, d stop. I... Can you just like say something without implying a threat? <laughs> because they'll be really upset if you do come for them and they're nice people, right? Right. Right. Okay, moving on. I'm going to get kicked out. In the book. Well, you got to be careful. I wouldn't necessarily call I know that. those men <laughs> are hungry for more life, more I'm opportunity. With you. They are tired of the hollow mockery of mere existence in a world of plenty. I am glad of every effort that the working men made to organize. I realize that all things will never be better until they are organized, until they stand all together like one man. That is my hope of world democracy. Despite their errors, their blunders, and the ignominy heaped upon them, I sympathize with the IWWs. Their cause is my cause. While they are threatened and imprisoned, I am manacled. Okay, pause a sec. I have a if question. they are denied a living wage, yes. I W W. I don't. What does that stand for? I W W. I don't think it actually is Isn't that. It? To the internet. No, it is the industrial <laughs> workers of the world. Oh, industrial workers of the world. I yeah. knew. Something. Close. Yeah. Though. Okay. I guess. Oh, I like really their logo. Um. Yeah, that's a cool logo. Also called the Wobblies, and there's that. No one seems to know the origin story of why they are called the Wobblies. Hmm. Um, if it was that some immigrants, when they said IWW, it sounded I wobbly wobbly. Um, I'm not. That that's actually that's one of the the uh, the stories about. That's why it's, yeah. uh, they refer to it as that. Or I don't I don't remember what the other ones are, but. Yeah, if we get, you know, we don't have much left in this little essay. So if we get done, we could go into a documentary on the IWW afterward. So that could be something we do. Or we could just find some other fun video to do. We can make fun of people on the internet. Yeah. Prager, you has got a new video premiering tonight. I just got a notification for it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Glad I was sitting down when you told me that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you want to just rip off your headphones and go watch it right away, don't you? I mean, I'm probably going to leave now, just <laughs> so you know. <laughs> uh, all right, let's continue with this book. I, too, am defrauded. While they are industrial slaves, I cannot be free. My hunger is not satisfied while they are unfed. I cannot enjoy the good things of life that come to me while they are hindered and neglected. The mighty mass movement of which they are a part is discernible all over the world. Under the fire of the great guns, the workers of all lands, becoming conscious of their class, are preparing to take possession of their own. That long struggle in which they have successively won freedom of body from slavery and serfdom, freedom of mind from ecclesiastical despotism, more recently a voice in government has arrived at a new stage the workers are still far from being in possession of themselves or their labor they do not own and control the tools and materials which they must use in order to live nor do they receive anything like the full value of what they produce working men everywhere are becoming aware that they are being exploited for the benefit of others and that they cannot be truly free unless they own themselves and their labor the achievement of such economic freedom stands in prospect, and at no distant date as the revolutionary climax of the age. 
and that's the end of the audiobook. Oh, that's the end of it. All right, that was a pretty uh, uh, quick one. Yeah. Should we uh, listen to the, the commentary that he put at the end there? Because he usually has something good to say about it. Well, is there other stuff that I missed in the earlier portion of this? That I mean, obviously there was. Yeah, I think he's going to sum it up as well, oh, too. Okay. So let's, let's, let's hear. So a few things stand out to me as uh, I read through this. First of all, this is from uh, 102 years ago. 102 and a half years so, ago, to be so exact. So now 104. It's from March. Um, but, uh, you know, people try to tell you, liberals usually, will try to tell you uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, whatever, you know, oh, socialism, that's not relevant anymore. Andrew Yang was saying this on his Fox News interview uh, mm. during the Democratic it's primaries this year. Oh, yeah, the distinction between, you know, socialism and capitalism, it's irrelevant. It's uh, this is a thing from the 20th century. It's X, Y, Z. Everything that Helen Keller describes here that was happening 100 plus years ago, it's still happening today. Capitalism Absolutely. runs on very simple logic. It's just about who owns the means of production. Everything else just flows from that. Mm -hmm. Capitalism, I mean, there are a lot of little tedious ins and outs of the actual administration of it. The overall logic is fairly basic. You put industry in yeah, the basic. hands of you know, a tiny few. That. They use that industry to gain more capital, more wealth. And uh, they keep everybody else working for them and unable to amass any capital of their own. That's the system. It's, uh, I mean, you can, you can write extensive breakdowns, and, and Marx did, uh, and, and we should read and study those. You know, after all, capitalists get MBAs. That's how they manage capitalism. We socialists, in trying to set up a new system, take over the global economy, we also need to know what we're Yes. I feel like not all business owners have master's degrees, though. I think they no, just no, have a lot of money. Yeah. Well, and a lot of them just inherit it from their parents. You know, maybe they grew up working in a, a small business and then they just take over when their parent uh, retires. Um, so that's not everyone, but he's saying, I think he's speaking mainly about, you know, the the captains of industry, the, the people at the... the okay. So at the I heads just, of very large corporations. In a very literal brain today. No, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good point. I mean, and having an MBA doesn't necessarily mean that you are a wise and, and good yeah, person. It don't it don't mean nothing, in fact, because how many of us have been told to go get degrees? And oh, this is uh, this is opening the gate to your future. Yeah, yeah my future of poverty. I mean, not really, but eh, I mean, we're I mean, the, the a edge. paycheck away from financial disaster. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> as we literally found out about a month and a half away from financial disaster, because. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how long you were out of work there. And if it wasn't for support from like family, yeah. we, we, I mean, if yeah, we would be even less than a month and a half yeah. out from complete disaster. We could be out on the street if we didn't have any I was help. a week away from OnlyFans. Yeah, right. <laughs> you could have just done a feet one. Yeah. Those Please do that. Kind of tempted to do some feet pics to pop up on there and just see what happens. <laughs> yeah, right? right. I mean, you know. I mean, I'm not hurting anyone. Right. Right. I mean, my feet. <laughs> stuff too, like take some pictures of you pulling your socks off, bag the socks, put them up for sale too. There you go. Oh, dang. You know what? No, I need to get my hiking socks. Oh, I need I'm to sure take my socks off that. after hiking. Like, wear yeah. several pairs. Oh, I'm so sweaty after oh, hiking. Oh, I'm so sweaty. I hiked five miles today. <laughs> socks are so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you got the perfect for it and everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to make money off hiking, Zach. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to hear it. Which is but funkier, anyway. my socks or my sourdough? <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> no, sorry. getting back on track. 
James, you, James, you sound a lot like uh, Donald Trump, who just had a small $2 million loan from his father to start his real estate empire, which he ran right. into the ground. <laughs> Despite that, mm -hmm. virtually right. every business that Trump has started has failed com completely and utterly. Er, yeah. I've created electric cars and I came from absolutely nothing. By nothing, I mean my family held emerald mines. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he didn't actually invent anything. He just bought companies so he could slap his name on it. Buying is effort. Yeah, right. It, it does take a few clicks to the mouse button. That's true. It's a truly unique vision, though, to start a fake university. And then yeah. like, why are the students complaining about being too much for no education? Right? <laughs> right? <clears throat> I, uh, we should make a fake university. Let's, let's, let's not get into grifting. Well, no, ours would actually right. be real because you'd yeah. actually get educational materials and courses. Well, yeah, let's I mean, the, and, yeah, th that's what this channel is. It's a, f a free university. A free university. Um, bread you. Bread you, yeah. It sounds a lot better than Prager you, which right. is literally a fake university. Maybe they could have Jordan Peterson on there and he could cry oh, some. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let's get back on track, though. Let's, Fine. Uh, I know. I know. It's tempting. It's funny to We're watch talking a about. Man but uh, the bottom line here is that capitalism has not changed really in a hundred years. Its effects on society have not changed, not really, in a hundred years. Because it's basically simple logic some of the technology has changed but the principles of who, you know how the wealth flows who owns industry uh you know rent is still rent interest on loans is still interest on loans you know retail capitalism selling things at a markup industrial capitalism uh, which is taking surplus value from workers at the point of production financial capitalism charging interest on debt those are unchanged so their their impacts on society are unchanged and everything that she's describing here you know about just mass roundups of people uh assassinations you know i mean that's been ongoing ever since anti-war demonstrators uh just look at the george floyd protests this this summer there were several um there was i remember a black uh trans activist um i think in louisiana who was murdered mysteriously air quotes there were also there were several male black teenagers who were found hanged in like lynch mob style in california i, I can't remember yeah. the town offhand but that came to mind as we were reading this that did not seem well first of all the authorities were trying to pass those off as suicide sorry no and uh you know let alone that they were Go ahead. Sorry, just I just had a real life question for you. How many how many times do we have a mass mass suicide? Mass that isn't suicide? part of a cult. Oh, it's always part of a cult if, if that happens. Are you saying that be, because that that they're happen? trying to pass that off as a suicide oh. is bullshit? Well, I mean, it was two people. I don't know if that considers you consider that a mass suicide. But. It's all yeah. going to start somewhere. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, not really. No, no, no. Okay, now that's coming off weird. I'm piecing that together in my head and going backwards, and it's gross. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, All right. It was only two people? I thought it was more than that. I thought well, it was he, he, five. Yeah. I mean, maybe they hadn't happened Wait, by let's, this point. He just let's look it up. Because okay. now I need to know. Okay. Well, well while you're looking it up, we'll, we'll continue on. Huh? several people all connected with each other when in activity. I forget happened? if they were related by family or what. Um, I'll have to see if I can dig that up, or if you know, please leave it in the comments. But capitalism's capitalism. It's been doing the same goddamn bullshit to the working class for at least these hundred years. And again, okay. if you go back yeah, and read that, Marx that and Engels, you know, some of the language is a little bit different. The technology certainly is different. But the principles of the injustices, how capital affects labor, are the same. So on that note, I'm going to leave it here. Um, there is another Helen Keller audiobook up 
at the channel socialism for all just do a search on the youtube if you want oh, and you can listen to the other one but uh she was a big uh iww supporter a wobbly and uh that's what the other one is about as well so thanks for listening uh we're gonna have more videos up th cool well that was a good little essay i like that a lot it's a good one <coughs> Yeah, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, and yeah, that you know, people try to complicate capitalism to be like, oh, well, this is crony capitalism, and this is you know corporate capitalism. These are all not real capitalism stuff. Like, no, it's it's it all comes down to who owns the means of production, and that's that's what determines what sort of uh, economic arrangement you have. So if a master owns the means of production and they have slaves who have no choice but to to work for them that you, you have a slave economy no matter you know if it's uh crony slavery or or corporate slavery or you know collectively owned slavery it's it's all economically slavery same thing is true with feudalism um no such thing as is is, is differentiating it by crony feudalism i mean it, of course it's crony feudalism because it's all divine right of kings and and that sort of thing um but they also just gave titles to people that they liked a lot too so i guess you could say it wasn't real feudalism it was it was crony feudalism and and real feudalism has never been tried and all this stuff but it doesn't matter because if you are a if you have a master or, or a lord and serf arrangement of the economy you have feudalism it doesn't matter uh, how many different bells and whistles you put on it and the same is true of of, of capitalism it doesn't matter how you, you dress it up if you have an owner and a worker relationship it's all capitalism yep. that and all that boils down to is exploitation of labor People trying to claim yeah. that capitalism drives innovation, for example, is one of the most annoying fucking things ever because it's like, now I'm pretty sure people would be even more motivated and innovative uh, if they were actually getting the full value of their labor and not a fraction of it. Nobody is motivated by, man, I'm so lucky that this other fucking schmuck over here just took the majority of the wealth I produced and gave me a pittance of it. Yay. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how how does that drive innovation to get the majority of what you produce stolen from? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. If if anything, it destroys innovation because workers that are that that otherwise might have a chance to bring something really brilliant to the world are just stuck in survival mode. That's how they keep everybody stuck, though. I mean. Mm -hmm. It all comes back to the same shit of, like, meeting people's baseline needs of stable housing, food, and health care. Mm -hmm. Physical, mental, dental, vision, all yeah. of it. And then, and then, and then, then access can, to like... education, access to mm -hmm. transportation. Right. Get rid of the student loan debts, increase mass transit. Make it free make it free and you will see the world flourish you will see yeah. people push their creativity and their intelligence more because like it won't be such a big risk they won't lose everything mm -hmm. and you won't be stuck with just people like doofy donald and crybaby elon and friends <laughs> in charge of everything who haven't they say they really understand the value of a dollar. Bullshit. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, how can you really, if you have literally billions of them, and not just right. like, like hundreds of billions in Facebook's mm -hmm. case? Right. Get the fuck out of here with your I understand the value of a dollar. Motherfucker, yeah. no, you don't. You don't understand people who it hurt for Dollar Tree to raise their prices from a dollar to a dollar twenty-five. Guys. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they understand a, a dollar the way that that uh, uh, Lucille Bluth from Arrested Development understands the value of a banana. So how this... much can a banana cost? Twelve dollars? 
But right. there is a lot of money in the banana stand. There's always money in the banana stand. That's true. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. But that's just it. Like, I... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it's true, Shanika. The greatest innovations are people's escape from capitalism. Mm -hmm. If I can make bread all day and just peddle my bread on the street out of the back of my car, I'd be fine. Mm -hmm. This is why you always leave a note. <laughs> Good to see you, Bread Crochets. Everyone should follow Bread Crochets as well. Everybody. They do a very similar stream to what I do, but they uh, crochet stuff, and you can see it on camera while, while, while they're making it. And it's always cool leftist stuff, but then they listen to, uh, you know, audiobooks at the same time of leftist stuff. It's a really cool show. Shnika would literally be the worst mixtape ever. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> We're just seeing back street. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was on brand though. It was it was on topic. <laughs> it was. I, I get it. I don't understand. My brain comes out with some random soundtrack for things that it's totally appropriate and fitting, but still makes me cringe. Like, oh god, I hate that song. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, what's that song? And guys dancing and you're like the saxophone one. I hate that song. I hate it more than anything else. Oh no, I'm never gonna dance again. Oh, like that's a great song. That's a horrible. You song. You don't know what you're talking about. Boy George is the shit. <laughs> that's fine. It just I don't like I don't that really song. Like, no, is that Boy George? Yeah. That was... All right, to the internet. Let's look it up. Shoot. No, I'm no, I'm not. Uh, so you should be teaming up with Bread Crochets to see if they'll crochet you a Bread Theory keychain. Oh, that'd be really cool. I'd definitely be down for that. Um, Trade crochet for bread. So we, Real we, bread. We have a, a choice to make <laughs> now. Uh, we got about an hour left in the stream. Uh, careless whisper, yeah. There you, you got it, Shanika. Um, <laughs> got about an hour left in the stream, so we could watch this, uh, which is why it became an IWW by Helen Keller. Uh, it's about 14 minutes long. By George oh, 12 Michael. 12 minutes long. Oh, George Michael. I and now Arrested George. Development, full George. circle. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Oh, that's awesome. Very crochet. That'd be really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll have to do that sometime. I'll take you up on that. So anyway, do we want to listen to... Uh... Can you make a poll? Hey, welcome to Socialism for All today. No, I'm just going to go right into it. Oh. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, I would never subvert democracy here. So Would you? Uh, no, I you wouldn't. You just did. Oh, my God. So, if you would like to continue on and listen to Why I Became an IWW, an interview with Helen Keller from New York Tribune from 1916, uh, I guess type one in the chat. And if you'd rather just look at something silly... Like we find some random video and do that instead. Uh, do a number, uh, do a number two in the chat. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Type a number two in the chat. How long is it gonna be till you get a poop emoji? I mean, there is, I think there probably is poop emojis across. It's happening. Twitch. Bonus points if it's Elmo. So yeah, what would you guys like to do? What What do you want to do? Well, I'll, I'll pull the the people on on camera too. Oh, women women count. Just kidding. One. <laughs> one is you vote one. one. Okay, <laughs> one. Cool. Yep. All right, well, let's get into it then. Wait, not everyone's done voting. <laughs> Three, history of the hammer and sickle. Ooh. How long is that one? I'd have to, I'd have to find that one. Let's look it up. Well, I, I'm going to have to look it up here if we're going to take a look at it. Come on, internet. Three minutes and 40 seconds. No lies. All right. I'm looking for it. Searching right now. 
What is the Hammer and Sickle by History with Hilbert? Hammer and Sickle? Eh. We'll, what, we'll save what is that. Hammer? We'll save that for another time. What is... Oh. Children's reactions to symbols for the first time. Yikes. It looks like they all know it beforehand. I think I would totally like to watch that sometime off camera, though, because I'm sure yeah, there'd be that some that sounds like Twitch timeout. Really weird one. All right. So it looks like most people are voting for one. So we're going to go with majority rule. We're not. Yeah. What? I'm just trying to think of a song with one in it now. One is the loneliest number. One is the loneliest number. Today's date is March 22nd, 2020, and this is a reading of an article called Helen Keller, Why I Became an IWW. Before we get into the article, please take a minute to like, share, subscribe, comment. All of that helps boost this channel and get Socialism for All more established so that we can keep spreading our educational message and discussions about socialism. So into the article, um, this article is hosted at IWW.org. And of course, IWW is in the title okay. of the article. I, what is an IWW? To see around. IWW stands for Industrial Workers of the World. The IWW is a radical labor union that was founded in 1905 out of the merging of a number of other labor unions for the explicit purpose of being a revolutionary labor union that would end capitalism. In other words, while other labor federations at the time, such as the AFL, uh, which exists to this day as the AFL-CIO um, for complicated historical reasons, yeah. it was able to swallow up the CIO basically as a result of McCarthyism, um, which weakened the CIO. But uh, while the AFL was generally more reactionary and contributed to sort of a labor aristocracy of like... They, they were the, the trade unionists, so they were the... Uh the supposed skilled laborers so they they didn't do anything like uh solidarity strikes or general strikes they they didn't really support anyone who was not directly in their union oh. so they sucked i yeah. was looking that up and it just said american football and then i got bored and <laughs> american <stopped>. football league <laughs> yeah that's another <laughs> afl yeah white male breadwinners who were able to unionize for the purpose of like elevate elevating themselves up above the rabble as kind of like teacher's pet of the capitalist class. The IWW was organizing the unorganized and really just down to the dregs of what was considered unskilled labor. So keep in mind 1905, this is a time that a lot more um, automation was coming into industry. So jobs were less quote skilled and a lot of it was more like manning equipment, pushing buttons, pulling levers, rather than like, you know, doing fine woodworking or something like that. And uh, <clears throat> the IWW uh, saw these people like new classes, well, not classes, but kind of like new levels of the proletariat emerging where workers not only were still in the same position um, as they'd always been in, in capitalism, where they had to uh, sell their labor and their labor was the only commodity that they had to sell to get by in life in, you know, to get money to live in capitalism. But that even the type of work that people were being made to do by the emerging technology was like less and less skilled. And um, again, the craft unions didn't want anything to do with them. So the IWW was a union for all the workers, as they said, they wanted to do one big union of every industry from public service to mining to agriculture. They wanted to get all the workers into one union for the and then set up uh, general strikes and basically take over capitalism. And uh, we'll read the IWW preamble probably in a different recording. Um, it's a very important organization in uh, U.S. and world labor history. So. Let's actually get into the article, my prefatory comments here aside. So Helen Keller, why I became an IWW. An interview written by Barbara Bindley in the New York Tribune, January 15th, 1916. I asked that Miss Keller relate the steps by which she turned into the uncompromising radical, 
She now faces the world as Helen Keller, not the sweet sentimentalist of women's magazine days. I was religious to start with, she began in enthusiastic acquiescence to my request. I had thought blindness a misfortune. Then I was appointed on a commission to investigate the conditions of the blind. For the first time, I, who had thought blindness a misfortune beyond human control, found that too much of it was traceable to wrong industrial conditions, often caused by the selfishness and greed of employers, and the social evil contributed its share. I found that poverty drove women to a life of shame that ended in blindness. I then read H.G. Wells' Old Worlds for New, summaries of Karl Marx's philosophy and his manifestos. It seemed as if I had been asleep and waked to a new world, a world different from the world I had lived in. For a time I was depressed, her voice saddened in reminiscence, but little by little my confidence came back and I realized that the wonder is not that conditions are so bad, but that society has advanced so far in spite of them. And now I am in the fight to change things. I may be a dreamer, but dreamers are necessary to make facts. Her voice almost shrilled in its triumph, and her hand found and clutched my knee in vibrant emphasis. And you feel happier than in the beautiful make-believe world you once had dreamed, I questioned? Yes. Oh, what a gross question. <laughs> like, do you imagine blind and deaf people just live in a fantasy world where everything's great and and fun and and happy oh some interview some interviewers need to <laughs> i think they just they like set their own box take a moment to be like what is the dumbest fucking thing i can ask <laughs> like that that's it be... <laughs> this is the one <laughs> uh, your beautiful make-believe world you once had dreamed oh. yeah Brad Gouchet's. we should have one big union it's supposed to be called the government. Yeah, I think they got extra confused on bread crochets because I think right now it's the church. Oh, God. Well, they but see, they don't want everyone in it. They just want to control everyone. They, but they, they're very exclusionary about who can actually be in the church, especially if we're talking about who gets to have the ultimate uh, super happy fun time. I can't wait to introduce the kids to Satanism. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw you share that, and I was like, yep. Here we go, kids. <laughs> Miss Amanda's drawn the pentagram on the floor. Are you ready? <laughs> like, this is for protection. <laughs> right? We don't put the selenite in the south corner because <laughs> it's too strong for that area. We're going to put it in the north. <laughs> um, moving on. She answered with firm, fine voice, which stumbles a little. Reality, even when it is sad, is better than illusions. This from a woman for whom it would seem all earthly things are but that. Illusions are at the mercy of any winds that blow. Real happiness must come within from a fixed purpose and faith in one's fellow men. And of that, I have more than I ever had. And all of this had come to you after you left college? Do you, did you get none of this knowledge of life at college? No, an emphatic, triumphant, almost terrifying denial. College isn't the place to go for any ideas. I thought I was going to college to be educated, she resumed as she composed herself and laughing more lightly. I am an example of the education dealt out to present generations. It's a deadlock. Schools seem to love the dead past and live in it. Well, see, I thought that college was basically just a, a Marxist indoctrination factory. I mean, if you listen to the right, that, that's basically what they believe it is. Well, I mean, if they had Russian history with my Greek professor at the U of M, then it would be. <laughs> yeah, so he, he's, he's forcing you to, like, you know, salute the, the hammer and sickle flag and, and recite... I mean, yeah, before you sat down in your desk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, he was very into Marxism and was like, you guys, the the story you've been fed up till now is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I managed to go all the way through college and never have, I don't think I had an, a single professor even mention Marx or Marxism or, or actual anarchism or, yeah, any of that. Yeah, we did a... 
well, it was Russian history. We, we talked about a lot of communism and Marxism and things like that. And instead of having like a historical textbook, we read poetry and fiction, looked at artwork instead, because then you actually saw the mind of the working class, not the narrative that you were to be fed. Yeah. Right. That was his whole point in this class. He's a cool guy. He's probably not with us anymore. Hmm. But that's huge, though, to like look at people's artwork that they are producing to represent all of these things that they were living through, and being like, "Here's a real honest take on it." Mm-hmm. That's why he did it that way. That was the whole point. Was like to look through the eyes of the people that were the most impacted. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, Bird Crush is. You, you, you should ask your brother uh, what he knows about Marx. Um, I would assume that going through philosophy at some point you would get to leftist philosophers. Yeah. Uh, definitely you would, you would go through Hegel because that seems to be the core of what philosophy students learn from the, the people that I, I know of who have talked about their philosophy degree. Um, so, and, and Hegel was the biggest influence on Marx, according to Marx. So, but yeah, uh, the idea that, that, that every college classroom is just a leftist indoctrination center. I mean, for one thing, these are adults. <laughs> You're an adult when you go to college. So yeah. you should be able to discern for yourself, uh, what you believe in, regardless of what a professor is saying, but also it's just not that at all. At 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 most, it's you know maybe progressive liberal, but even that, I would say maybe one out of ten professors that I had, I would consider to be progressive if I knew their politics at all. Mm -hmm. um, so, right. well, like that's that's a big ball of dice there. You know, I mean, there's there's still a lot of courses that totally lean in the opposite direction. So, oh, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. The entire yeah. economics department. I, <laughs> I've heard many people now with economics degrees talk about how they went through their entire program never talking about Marx, even though he's one of the most influential economists that's ever lived. Um, and yeah, it being just, yeah, right wing <laughs> indoctrination from the beginning right well that's I, I oh sorry go ahead oh. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um i think honestly what scares them the most is that uh when you get into the humanities courses like philosophy one of the things in science too and i'm talking real science not economics i'm talking <laughs> you know <laughs> To have an open mind that when you are presented with new evidence that it's okay to change your opinion about something and your stance on it. Right. That is a real threat against the right wing indoctrination factors. Yeah, I think that's the thing. But it's crazy because it's such a simple practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. There's even different language, right? Because like in science, when you can run the same test over and over and over and over again and get the same result every time that's one thing but to like you know you can still alter these things i'm thinking that's okay i can't do words today that's okay take a moment collect your thoughts uh, no problem um james says in west virginia it looks like people go to college for three years and can't find a job but owe money uh, people that go to trade schools or get that job training get the jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the, I mean, that's the thing, too, is that, you know, the retort to my college degree is, is not worth very much is, oh, well, you should have gone to trade school. But the thing is, we can't mm -hmm. all be trades people either. Right. I mean, there's only so, I mean, as, as good of a job as being a plumber, an electrician or an HVAC technician is, there's only so many people that can do those jobs. And there's only so much need for any of those jobs. We can't all do that either. This, yeah. the, this is the structural inequality of capitalism. It doesn't matter if we're all supremely qualified to, to have the highest paying jobs. We, we could all be 
brilliant lawyers. Every single person in this country could be a brilliant lawyer or a doctor but, or, or something like that. But there's only so much need for lawyers, doctors, and other high paid positions. So. But also, like, not everybody wants to be a lawyer. Yeah, and they don't like, deserve to have that's... a bad life because of that. Right. Like, the person, like, my stepdad's a mechanic. Mm -hmm. In my eyes, his job is just as valuable as child wrangler, as landscaper, mm -hmm. as human being, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. everybody has a different skill set that they can bring to the table, and that's sure. cool as shit. I think we need to focus more on accepting that different people can do different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but like, then also deserve to have a good life. Yeah. And not be punished because they're good at something that's not as valued. Right. Like every job has its pluses and its minuses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I mean, there's plenty of jobs. They tend to be jobs that, that are filled by women primarily, uh, but, but the entire care work industry incredibly vital work mm -hmm. terribly paid yeah uh, you're yeah. lucky to make much above minimum wage doing care work but literally people would die if people didn't do that work right and also like that's another oh side tangent child care should be free well, education i'm not done <laughs> education though free school lunch should be free before and after school care should be free Mm -hmm. the government should be paying for all of that especially if you're going to sit here and cry about like oh, the birth rate's dropping yeah. make it affordable to have a child because child care costs are astronomical mm -hmm. yep. my coworker just had a baby little peanut right they're, they're trying to draw out sending the child to daycare because it's going to be $400 a week Oh, at that point you're just working you're just all yeah. working the child care and yeah, right to have someone else raise your kid. Yeah, at home hanging out with your kid instead. Yeah, right. But then you know, income or insurance, you're sacrificing. We had universal health care. This isn't a thing anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like if if you're working for minimum wage or little above it, that's literally your at least one of the adults in the house full fucking check going towards child care. Yeah. 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 After taxes are taken out, like you, you have nothing left. And I've seen this happen to quite a few couples that I'm friends with. When they started having kids, they were like, okay, fuck, we got to figure out which one of us can afford to keep working. Because if we put the kids in daycare, then, you know, one of our paychecks is going solely towards that. And it's like, it's these, yeah, it absolutely is. And these like before and after school programs are so great because like it's put on by the school district. Mm -hmm. They open at 6 a.m. They go until 6 p.m. And I feel though may not accommodate everyone. It's going to accommodate more than not. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Or maybe they assess the situation and make adjustments. Like, come on. School lunch should be free, too. If they have to be at school and the parent can be come for, if your kid ain't in school, they need free lunch. They don't need to be punished for not for their parents. Right. There's... Absolutely. There's some schools that have made some headway in that of having both breakfast and lunch and sending kids home with like a bag of snack. Yeah. Later too. And it's like, okay, they are setting the example. When the fuck mm -hmm. is the rest of our school system going to follow suit? Because they right. really need to. It shouldn't be a privilege only for the schools that are in wealthier fucking areas that have a higher tax base. Right. Yeah. Right. Level the playing field. Right. That's what it should all be. Having a fucking That's lottery what... on your education ain't cool. Yeah. Right. But they, they, they gerrymander these school districts for mm -hmm. precisely that reason, because they don't want to have to care about the poor kids. They right. only want to care about their kids and their rich friends' kids. 
I mean, it just like again, it brings back to, us back to the whole BLM thing. It's about equality, making sure things are fair and the same for everyone. Mm -hmm. Not because you were born into privilege or you you're white. Congratulations! Mm -hmm. Like here you go. Right. It's not how it should be. Like. That is They're missing the out comes into play because it's not just the gerrymandering. It's also um, what used to be redlining, but isn't called that anymore. But basically still the same fucking thing happening. Gentrification, mm -hmm. all of mm -hmm. these things. And um, like I've, I've seen this in my life play out in Flint of like areas that used to be very well off neighborhoods that were people of color because they were you know, had access to well-paying jobs in these shops. Guess where the shops got shut down at? Not in the wealthier areas, not in the white neighborhoods. These shops got shut down in areas that were predominantly people of color and took away their jobs. Mm -hmm. It's an intentional move to drive people further into poverty and then bring gentrification into play there where they're, you know, um, coming after people for not being able to afford to pay property taxes or running people out of town where, you know, they abandon their homes and, oh, hey, now this property is up, sale, up for sale dirt cheap so that somebody from the suburbs can come in and fucking buy it and mm -hmm. establish something there instead. Um, they've driven up the rent rates. I mean, there's apartments mm -hmm. that used to be like three... 350 to 500 a month, depending on how many bedrooms right downtown. But, oh no, some fucking wealthy motherfuckers came in from the suburbs and remodeled them, and now they're a couple thousand a month. That's insane! Right. Like, when you remove access to decent paying jobs and then remove the ability to afford to live there, what the fuck do you call that? <laughs> That's systemic racism at play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, oh, that's not real. It's not real. It just happens. Like, no. Well, it is intentionally done. Mm -hmm. Well, even if it's not, though, that's that's the thing. It's systemic racism doesn't have to be like we have this idea to all get together and be racist. It can just be the, the, the effect of the system. So, you, you know, uh, you can you can write a, a, a ordinance that it's uh, not okay for anyone to sleep underneath an overpass. And you might be thinking, you, you might not be, you know, anti-homeless or, or, you know, anti-poverty in your heart when you write that ordinance. But that's just but what it, you need but to it, think about. But it, it, it definitely disproportionately affects one group. So the outcome is an anti-homeless piece of legislation because they're the only ones who would be sleeping underneath an overpass. So the same can be true of, you know, things that have a racist outcome just because people have been systemically oppressed for a long time and therefore don't have the generational wealth to push off of anything then that you do to target poor people by, you know, just de facto targets people of color, even without saying it, even without thinking it, that's, that's the outcome. So that's, it's still systemically a racist policy. Or system. Yep. Cool. Let's got more creative about not saying the quiet parts out loud in those. That too. Time, you know. That, that but, too. You know. It's the Lee Atwater strategy. Yeah. But who knows? We're seeing that bounce back too of racist being emboldened and saying the quiet parts out loud, and some of them are starting to do so in legislation in the last yeah. year. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, keep your eyes open because the bigots are out there and they're in office. Yeah. Right. And they're running yeah. corporations. And well, I mean, uh, Lauren Boebert just the other day said that we should basically have a theocracy. And it wasn't too far from that wording of it. It's just that <laughs> she's being very naked and open about she wants the church to run the country. Uh, and this is an elected federal official so. she can want in one hand and shit in the other and see which one fills up first oh. <laughs> uh. 
Yep. All right. Well, let's let's move on in the text. Oh, is that okay? Okay, or did you have no, more to say? No, that's okay. You're, you're, you're nothing. What? Just I'm go. nothing? Just oh, go. Okay. Well, I'm just kidding. But you know, don't you, I pleaded through Mrs. Macy and for her, that the intentions of your teachers were for the best. But they amounted to nothing, she countered. They did not teach me about things as they are today, or about the vital problems of the people. They taught me Greek drama and Roman history. They celebrated the achievements of war rather than those of the heroes of peace. For example, there were a dozen chapters on war where there were a few paragraphs about the inventors, and it is this overemphasis on the cruelties of life that breeds the wrong ideal. Education taught me that it was a finer thing to be a Napoleon than to create a new potato. It is my nature to fight as soon as I see wrongs to be made right. So after I read Wells and Marx and learned what I did, I joined a socialist branch. I made up my mind to do something, and the best thing seemed to be to join a fighting party and help their propaganda. That was four years ago. I have become an industrialist since. An industrialist, I asked, surprised out of composure. You don't mean an IWW, a syndicalist? I became an IWW because I found out the Socialist Party was too slow. It is sinking into the political bog. It is almost, if not quite, impossible for the party to keep its revolutionary character so long as it occupies a place under the government and seeks office under it. The government does not stand for the interests the Socialist Party is supposed to represent. Socialism, however, is a step in the right direction, she conceded to her dissenting hearers. The true task is to unite and organize all workers on an economic basis, and it is the workers themselves who must secure freedom for themselves who must grow strong, Miss Keller continued. Nothing can be gained by political action. That is why I became an IWW. What particular incident led you to become an IWW? I interrupted. The Lawrence strike. Why? Because I discovered that the true idea of the IWW is not only to better conditions, to get them for all people, but to get them at once. What are you committed to? Education or revolution? Revolution, she answered decisively. We can't have education without revolution. <laughs> yes. We have tried peace education for 1900 years. <laughs> yeah, I heard that yes, both and in there. I agree. I agree. Um, they go hand in hand. <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't want a bunch of people running in, in various directions who have no idea what's going on, and you don't want a bunch of, you know, world-weary philosophers just sitting around talking about what could be. You gotta have both. Yep. Yeah. Kwame Nkrumah, that uh, theory without praxis is empty, practice without theory is blind. Yeah, 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 that's it. That's very, yeah, very succinct. So, yeah. Do you have anything you wanted to add? Oh, you can add stuff too. I'm not preventing you. Oh my God. <laughs> I look <crazy>. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I mess with him all the time. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we'll continue on then. Years great. and it has failed. <laughs> <laughs> Let us try revolution and see what it will do now. I am not for peace at all hazards. I regret this war, but I never regretted the blood of the thousands spilled during the French Revolution. And the workers are learning how to stand alone. They are learning a lesson they will apply to their own good out in the trenches. Generals testify to the splendid initiative the workers in the trenches take. If they can do that for the masters, you can be sure that they will do that for themselves when they have taken matters into their own hands. Don't forget, the workers are getting their discipline in the trenches, Miss Keller continued. They're acquiring the will to combat. My cause will emerge from the trenches stronger than it ever was. Under the obvious battle waging there, there is an invisible battle for the freedom of man. Again, the advisability of printing all this here set forth. And this finally from the patience exhausted gentle little woman. I don't give a damn about semi-radicals. Gradually, through the talk, Helen Keller's whole being had taken on a glow, and it was in keeping with the exalted look on her face and the glory in her sightless blue eyes that she told me, 
I feel like Joan of Arc at times. My whole becomes uplifted. I, too, hear voices that say, come, and I will follow, no matter what the cost, no matter what the trials I am placed under, jail, poverty, calumny, they matter not. Truly, he has said, woe unto you that permits the least of mine to suffer. So again, that's a brief interview. All right, we made it through. Do you have any thoughts about it? Go unions. Yeah, go unions. Go IWW. The whole the purpose of the IWW is the, a union that is is less able to be broken because you know you don't have to uh, seek official recognition from your employer to be represented by it. It's it's more about anyone can join it, and then if any of the the businesses that a member works at is is doing some shady stuff then everyone can strike on their behalf so i just like the power collective mm -hmm. right. it's dope it shuts shit down across that. multiple industries and really gets their fucking attention like excuse me yeah no get your shit mm -hmm. together my company that i'm working for this summer actually offered to have all their employees unionize that's amazing like, that's, that's almost know unheard what of you in this do. Day. that's what's up i know i was like crap i wish you had more employees so you could offer benefits because <laughs> <laughs> i'd stay no one's punched me in the face <laughs> it's a good time mm-hmm we'll fight well, no i don't want to fight <laughs> want to unionize yeah. Huh? I mean, I do, except for I'm management, so I don't think I can unionize. Why not? Because I'm management. I, so I, you're the man. Well, You're kind the of. exploiter. No, because I'm not an owner. I'm, I'm in between, but usually management is seen as, as being the natural ally of, of the owners rather than the other way around. But you spend most of your time with your employees, but I mean, you're not, you don't have any employees. You're not the manager yet. and I'm you're- Getting close to hiring someone. Now, anything. this late in the season? Yeah. Sorry. Well, cause we really need it. We have a lot more work to do than me. We have time to do it. So yeah. See, this is why I need to get my bread stuff. I gotta get it all together. Yeah. Then I can rent a kitchen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what should, what should we look at now? We still have some time. Oh. Does anyone have any suggestions? Do you have Shanika any suggestions? Shanika suggested earlier that we look at the history of the hammer and sickle. All right. There's some short ones. Let's explore it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it, Someone else the working class is that the hammer is for, for farming work, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically. But, uh, but maybe there's more to it than that. I always like to hear weird little things or the sure. significance in the colors. The red is for right. the, the red, you know, the blood of life. But why gold? For the wheat of uh, sustenance. The wheat of my labor. Yeah. The wheat of my bread. The, yeah. The conquest of bread. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look we at it. We did it full circle The hammer and sickle one became episode. one of communism's <laughs> most famous symbols. The image this? has a powerful yes. symbolic message. Since it represents the alliance of rural and urban workers, the partnership is essential for the success of a communist society. The sickle, as an agricultural instrument, represents all rural workers, while the hammer is used to signify factory workers and manufacturers. After a contest in 1917, the symbol started to be part of the Soviet Union coat of arms and would later be used as part of its flag. This symbol became part of several flags of communist countries or flags of political parties with a communist bias around the globe. The hammer and sickle would become one of the 20th century's most iconic symbols, awakening feelings of love and hate, but hardly ever viewed with indifference. The hammer and Okay, well that didn't tell us a whole lot. Oh. Why well, didn't? 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here we go. Here, the hammer and sickle. One. When people see this symbol, they mostly think of things like communism, socialism, and the USSR. And it's true that lots of communist organizations down the years have used this symbol in their logos. But in this video, I want to ask why the hammer and sickle? What's the history and the meaning behind this symbol? Well, it goes back to this design, which was designed after a competition was held in the USSR in 1917, following the Russian Revolution, that led to a communist government being installed. And they needed a symbol to represent their new communist country. And so, Lenin held a competition, and this design was the winner. And this was then implemented onto lots of different designs, and ultimately also the flag. Now, this can obviously be divided into two parts, which is the hammer and the sickle, and both have certain significances to them. For example, the hammer that's being used is a representation of industrial workers, while the sickle that's being used is a representation of agricultural workers. Now, this also then correlates to the industrial workers living in the city and the agricultural workers living out in the countryside. And this was then a symbol that people from the countryside and the city, the working classes from both, joined together to form one class, which is ultimately one of the aims of the early communist movement, to forge a solidarity between the workers. And the hammer and the sickle was the symbol that symbolized this coming together of the two. There's also a theory that the hammer is representing men, it's more masculine symbol, whereas the sickle is often shown as being that the peasant girls use on the land as well. So there's also that second layer to it. And this obviously made it onto the flag of the USSR. Now you might be wondering, obviously on this flag, the background is red, and red is an important color for socialism and communism and labor movements. So why is this the case? Why is red used so often? Well, this really goes back to the French Revolution. And as you can see, the very famous image of the French Revolution, many of the revolutionaries wore cockades and hats, the berets and bonnets that they wore were often red. This goes back even to the colors of Paris, one of the colors being red to represent St. Denis and St. Martin. And as well, this was used in a flag by the Paris Commune of 1871, which also then obviously led further down the line to the communist movement and is often linked together as a very, very early form, uh, a similar idea that went on there. So they decided to use red as this color of protest, which then led into it becoming an important symbol for socialists and communists as well, and why it made it onto the flag of the USSR. So thank you very much for watching. This has just been a quick video in my sort of symbol series as to why they use the hammer and six. Well, there you have it. That's cool. I didn't know that connection to the French Revolution. So see. learn something. You're right. Thank you. Thank you, Shanika, for suggesting the video. I need to make a star so we could shoot it across the screen. The more you know. Yeah, I, I know a streamer who does that sort of thing. I don't have those kinds of skills. What do you? I, I, nor do I have the time to program that. Do you? I'm not allowed to touch the computer. Who's most of the week. What are you talking about? I'm just a woman. Oh my god. <laughs> Always got to stir shit, don't I you? I can't even have my own ideas. <laughs> or bank account. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we we do have a joint bank account. So I'm actually in don't charge of the own. bank account, so. Are you? Just had to throw. How back. often do you check it? Enough. See, he ain't given an answer because I'm giving an answer. Uh, enough is vague. You're I check it daily, sometimes more than one time a day. Wow, look at you. Yeah, that's right. Look at me. I think I'm so simple, just a baby making machine. Yes, that, that is usually what kidlets. I view you as. Yeah, I knew it. Jeez. This is a problem with society today, folks. Is it? Mm -hmm. I love it. You're in rare form today. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's going to kick me out any moment now. <laughs> Get out. This is my show. I'm not going to say that. And not for yours.
Oh, should we look at uh, Patriot Front marching? Ew. No. I mean, we can, but it's gross. I mean, it is gross. Yeah. Who wants to see something disgusting? Well, it's important to know about. This in is the, the world. visual equivalent. Smell this. It smells like shit. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Incendiary comments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Hey. As we turn to Boston, where Mayor Michelle Wu joined federal officials Tuesday to respond to the march through downtown Boston Saturday, led by 100 members of the white supremacist Patriot Front, carrying <sighs> shields and a banner that read, Reclaim America. Officials claim the Boston Regional Intelligence Center had no warning they were coming. Local anti-fascist activists confronted the marchers. Mayor Wu also said the Boston Police Civil Rights Unit yeah, is investigating like how too. Patriot Front members were seen attacking a local black artist and musician named Charles Morell, as police looked on. Charles Morell posted online about the attack, writing, quote, just another day in the office. Yesterday, as I was walking to work, a group of white men wearing masks and holding military weapons were marching on the sidewalk. I was walking past the historic Copley Hotel. I thought it was odd that a protest was happening on the sidewalk and not the street. When I tried to get my phone to record the masked mob, this happened. See photos, he said. He went on, now fake bot accounts are in my DM and on my social media pages trying to instill fear into myself and community. I assume these are the same masked white men. I share this to first say things have not changed much. <gasps> Secondly, this is why I do the work that I do with passion. What are you gasping about? Those people going after that person like yeah, that. Yeah, just for standing there and being black. Yep. Oh, but the Patriot Front, they're not uh, a racial organization. Sure, that's why they're all dressed in the same stupid ass well, look outfit. At these, look at these cowards. They got to attack him with their metal shields when he's completely unarmed. And they have to gang up on him. And he still uh, looks like he's kicking their ass at that. Like. Yeah. yeah, it is. And then, oh, this is free speech. Yeah, look what your free fucking speech gets you. Yeah. That's not speech there. That's assault. Right. But I'm like, I mean, it started as speech, right? It started as speech and organizing. And yeah. then that leads to oh, this yeah. sort of fucking shit. Yeah, because they make it lead to it. I hope he just like beats the shit out of those guys. Yeah, like a bunch of... Oh, I'm sorry. I hope he really gives them a stern talking to. That's right. We cannot about advocate their violence. Shitty point of view and their naughty words and not nice touching. Mm -hmm. Good job. You learning. That hurt. <laughs> right. Mm. I have nothing nice to say, so. Yeah. All right. Well, Charles continuing on. Charles is not doing interviews while he seeks legal advice, but he did speak out Monday. I am appalled that even as a healer, I have to get my, my cup poured into in this incident. But in this incident, I will continue to pour into other people's cup as a way to pour into my own cup. Aww. For more, we're joined by three guests. In yeah. Boston, Kev, Reverend Kevin Peterson, longtime civil rights activist, founder of the New Democracy Coalition, advisor to Charles Morell, is with us. In Cambridge, Philip Martin, an award-winning journalist and senior investigative reporter for GBH News Center for Investigative Reporting, where he recently wrote a piece headlined, It's Happening Here. Massachusetts has a growing neo-Nazi movement. And still with us, Michael Edison, a senior investigative reporter with the Southern Poverty Law Center, who focuses on internet radicalization and far-right extremism. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Reverend Peterson, let's begin with you. Explain, I'm sorry we can't have Charles Morell on today, but you are his close friend and advisor. Can you tell us more about what happened on Saturday? Uh, I I'm not sure if I can tell you more about uh, about what happened beyond what you've already said, but we do know that uh, Mr. Morell uh, is currently traumatized. Uh, uh, he has a focus around racial healing uh, in this city. 
Uh, he uses it through the arts. Uh, he believes that this uh, is an opportunity where he can uh, redirect uh, the trauma that he experienced in terms of engaging these uh, children of the KKK on Saturday, use that experience to uh, engage the city, particularly uh, Mayor Wu, in terms of changing things around, changing the yes, narrative you can, of the city. Mm. Boston is uh, not unlike uh, other places across the United States with regard to endemic racism. Uh, Boston was founded uh, during the slave trade. Uh, the legacy of, uh, of slavery and systemic uh, oppression uh, towards black people uh, persists even into 2022. Uh, just two weeks ago, the Boston City Council uh, apologize for its complicity in the slave trade and ongoing systemic oppression. Mr. Morell's uh, uh, experience. Now, where are all the people that say that, us? like, this sort of shit doesn't happen? All the people that are constantly running their mouths saying that racism isn't a thing, it's a construct. What sort of justification do they have for this? I mean, I know it's bull, but. Well, yeah, and, and, and the people like. Uh, ben Shapiro and I, I believe uh, Dennis Prager also said, oh, you know, the, the left, are, they're the violent ones. They're always the ones uh, provoking violence and stuff like that, um, conveniently ignoring these incidents that, that happen a lot and have only happened more since... Only uh, some of us. Since the time that Trump... <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, they're, they're, they'll just ignore it. Mm -hmm. they're, they're actively ignoring it. They're not people Absolutely. who live under mm -hmm. rocks and are unaware of what's happening. They're just like, la, 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 la. I didn't hear that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, even in the photo, just that isolated snapshot, uh -huh. that was one, one less than a guy. second, like one millisecond in other events that could have happened to this poor person. Mm-hmm. Who's just trying to be a person and just, just trying to like just living their life, like heal the community. Like I mean, in my experience, most artists are not violent people. Yeah, I, it's I not in their nature. That and he like, would have provoked an entire crowd of of armed white dudes. May I also add, where else I could think that this might go to, in in the other side's perspective, like. He's a man. He shouldn't be traumatized. Like, hmm? you men can be traumatized. All sorts of people can be traumatized. I agree. It's not gender exclusive. Right, but, like, don't you feel that too, Trisha? Like, where that's, like, more of a female? It, or it's usually pushed, like, that's a female experience. That's, a, that's, that's for girls. <laughs> right. There probably will be. And sorry, I, I cut out yeah. right in the middle of that. But uh, yeah, no, that that is one of the things that those bigoted assholes tend to go for of like mm -hmm. trying to basically point out having any weak or having any emotion besides anger being a weakness. Yeah, and right. Like, yeah, no. <laughs> um, yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. It's fucked up. Like, that didn't just traumatize him. They're traumatizing an entire city. Uh, that's the point. Mm -hmm. the terror is the point. Yeah. Um, right. Like, what about all the people that he helps people that know him personally? Mm -hmm. Too. Like, I, I can't. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Systemic uh, uh, oppression... Uh, the, this is, this environment in Boston, I believe, provided uh, a uh, a way through which, or rationale through which, uh, these uh, children of the KKK came into Boston to, to try to spew uh, their toxin uh, and their hate. Reverend Peterson, how did the police respond? Where were they when Charles was being attacked? Well, Mr. Demerrill's uh, narrative is that the police were in uh, close proximity uh, to him. And in fact, um, uh, Mr. Morell uh, suggests that uh, he engaged the police uh, for help, uh, but that help uh, at that point was, was it forthcoming. Uh, so we have uh, uh, at this point um, uh, different narratives coming from the administration, from the police, from Mayor Wu, 
uh, and Mr. Morrell's account. I'm, I'm, um, I'm confident to say that I've had a number of conversations with Mr. Morrell, and he's clear that the police were present. Uh, he asked for help. Uh, the police officer, or one of them, uh, claimed that uh, they were overwhelmed and they couldn't respond to uh, the assault that took place uh, uh, on him. Uh, that's disturbing. Even more disturbing is the fact that um, uh, such an organized um, uh, group of uh, white supremacists, the children of the KKK, uh, descended on the uh, city and marched through the streets with uh, with um, with uh, brazen. Uh, Why are they activity, masked? Uh, unmonitored. Yeah, I they didn't college. believe in that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. They don't want to be identified in docs. They, these guys literally... That's why they all wear the same outfit. <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm these sorry. Guys cry, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> they, they cry on their social media pages about how they got doxxed and fired from their jobs and shit like that. And it's like, well, then quit being a piece of shit. Um, you know, they, they literally think they are victims. Yeah. Victims of their own stupidity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Not, not victims at all. No, it's called consequences for your fucking actions and choices. Yeah. But I don't want to have consequences for my actions. I'm an adult. This is America. I should be able to do whatever the fuck I want. Freedom! Yeah, that, that's how they believe. And because they can't, without consequence, they believe they're being oppressed. Yeah, whatever. Um, I don't think that they, James, called themselves children of the KKK. I think that's just how it's being... Framed. I think he's saying that to insult them. Yeah. Well, I mean, they are. This is definitely the, the legacy. As, as uh, Shanika pointed out, they got the white hoods. Mm -hmm. they, where have we seen those before? Right. Shouldn't be too, too hard to connect those strollers. dots. Um, um, yeah. There's also, in, in this specific area of Boston, there are feds that do protect and Patriot Front. Mm -hmm. Flat the fuck out. Absolutely. So Because they're often the same people. <laughs> uh -huh. Shanika's comment that the police were changing out their hoods is on point. Um, yep, absolutely. It's, it's not just the police. They, they literally have an interdepartmental force of feds and local pigs that work with the white supremacists. Mm -hmm. It's already been fully fucking documented. If, if yep. you look it up on Googler, you will find it. Absolutely. I'm just shaking my head in disgust. Yeah. I, I think I may have to remove my stuff because I feel the smart ass, not well, think, nice mouth bubbling forth. And I, I think we to... got the, the, the gist of the, the story. Do you, do you want to move on to something different? No, I'm going to get ready, Fred. I love you all. You all well, are I suppose wonderful it is about people. That time. Every single one of you is awesome. Unionize. Don't terrorize. Have a great night. Yeah. Hell yes. Love you too, Amanda. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for being on, Amanda. All right. Yeah, I think we should probably uh, wrap it up for the night. This is a, a good place to leave it. Um, are you guys going to do your, your head theory finally again? What's happening with that tomorrow? Yeah. I guess we got to do laundry, but... Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to do laundry, but maybe we'll, maybe I'll go do laundry and you guys can do your show. I don't know if you trust me to touch up here by myself. I, of I'm course, I've I've tried to show you how to do it so many times. So many. Oh, stop it! You guys should um, do your show tomorrow. Just, I'm just, if I'm you can so add me for team, I can help her with running the red screen stuff. <laughs> oh, cool! Yeah, I'll have to figure out. I don't know how to do that, so yeah, I'll figure that out. Uh, I'm not sure how. Rob did it, <laughs> but uh, I, I know right. there's a way to add people to your team. I just don't know where in the menu it's at. <laughs> cool. But. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Trisha, for, for joining me once again. It's It's been great having you on. Thank you um, for having me. Yeah, you're quite welcome. And uh, I think it's about time to raid into another Twitch channel. So if anyone has a suggestion, of who to raid today. We've tried Beer Bash Johnson and it, it, it has not worked now a couple of times because they only accept raids from 
people that they're following. So we'll have to find somebody else. So let's see who's on. Let's see. So and if you guys have any suggestions, who to raid, now's the time to bring that up. Let's see who's on right now. Whoever it was you had raided last Wednesday, their show is pretty intriguing. I watched their stuff for a while afterwards. Oh, cool. I remember who it was. <laughs> uh, who did I raid last time? Beer Bash Johnson sounds like a good president. <laughs> yeah, I vote for Beer Bash Johnson. I think I might do uh, Proudly Radical today. Hell yeah. So I will shout them out in the chat. All right, and I, I will say goodbye to you for tonight, Trisha, and uh, see you next time. And then we will start the raid. All right. Have a good night, Zach. Good night, good everyone night. in the audience. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Zero Doxy, a crochet artist who is close to radicalization. Oh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take you up on that bread crochets. We'll find that Zero Doxy. That's a Zero Doxy. Gotcha. I will. I'm not following them, so I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to search. Zero Doxy. Oh yeah, another crochet artist. Very cool. Oh, and, and watching uh, some Noah Sampson, who is a, a creator that I like a lot. So yeah, we'll we'll raid into them. Here is the the link for that. Oh cool. Yeah, I don't know how to do raids on YouTube if that is a thing. It should be a thing. But uh, I'm not aware of how to do that yet. If it is. So here we go, starting the raid. Hang out with me for one more second. All right, raid channel. And we'll start the raid. Thank you all. See you next time.